Last week, Tony, one of our members, asked if it was possible to have a spreadsheet automatically email a reminder containing a list of tasks a few days before an event. For example, here I've got my task list with the due date and the date we want to send out the reminder. By the way, my dates are formatted day, month, year. Now we can see that I need Excel to send me one email containing my two tasks and another email to Jo with her one task. For this, I'm going to look at how we can use Power Automate to program this with absolutely zero coding required. All you need is a Microsoft 365 account and your Excel file saved either on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online. Let's take a look. Before we switch to Power Automate, it's important to point out that your data must be saved in an Excel table. You can do that via the Insert tab and then Table or use the keyboard shortcut Control T. Now my data is already in a table and if we look at the Table Design tab, you can see the table name is Tasks and we'll be referencing that in our automation. At the top we can see the file is saved on OneDrive. You can use OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online for this, but not OneDrive Personal. Now if you're familiar with Power Automate, then you may have used the add-in available for Excel. You can access the add-in by the Get Add-ins icon and then search for it in the store. And it used to be called Flow, they haven't updated it, so in the add-ins it's still called Microsoft Flow for Excel. I've already got it installed and we can see it on my data tab over here on the right hand side. I won't be using Power Automate here because the new flows that are available are limited to the instant cloud flow and that requires you to click a button to trigger the flow whereas I want to create a flow that's triggered based on the reminder date in my table without me having to even open the file and that means I need to use Power Automate online. Now you can navigate to Power Automate from the app launcher in the top left when you're logged into Microsoft Apps Online. If you don't see it in the list here, you can click on All Apps and then navigate to it. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Now I'm creating a new flow, so I'm going to click on Create and I want a scheduled cloud flow and that's going to allow me to choose when and how often it runs. I'm going to call it Email Task Reminders. I'm going to start it today and it can run at 10 a.m. every and let's choose day. So we'll click create. So I've created my first step in my flow. I can click on it here to edit it and we can make changes. Obviously I don't need to edit it, it's doing what I want. So I'm ready to add my next step. Here I want to get a table from Excel and I want to list the rows present in a table. Here it is in the list. The location is OneDrive for Business and you can see my SharePoint sites are also available. Because I've selected OneDrive for Business, the document library is OneDrive. If you select SharePoint then you'll have different options for the document library. Then I simply need to navigate to the file. So it's in a folder called Blog Posts and then Automate and there's the file. Once you've selected your file, you can then select the table. Remember my file has a table called Tasks. Obviously if you have more tables in your file then they're all going to be listed here. I just have the one. Now under Advanced Options, I can set some filters. I only want to get the rows in the table that contain today's date. So here I'm going to enter in a filter and I'm filtering based on the reminder date. It's called Reminder Date with no spaces and then EQ, which is the abbreviation for equals, and I need to open the single quote. And then for the date, I can add an expression that automatically returns today's date. So I want expression, and then in the formula field, I'm going to enter my formula. The first function I need here is format the date and time, and then I need to convert my time from UTC. And what time am I converting? Well, the UTC now time. This is the same as the now function in Excel. Now I need to convert it from UTC to my local time zone. I'm in Australia on the Eastern coast. So my time zone is called E dot Australia standard time. And notice it's in single quotes, close parentheses on my convert function. And then I need to tell it the format and that's going to be YYY, MM and then day. 
close the single quote, close parentheses, and that's my formula. So we're formatting the date that we're converting from the UTC Now time into my Australia Standard Time, and we're formatting it in the format Year, Month, Day. Click OK. Now I need to close the single quote. So I've got an open single quote, then my expression, and then a close single quote. And then down here, I need to set the date time format to ISO 8601. Now, obviously not all of you are going to be on Australia's Eastern coast. So in the video description, I've included a link where you'll find the various time zone names. So that's the step to get the data from my table. Let's add a new step to get a distinct list or a unique list of emails from that filtered list so that each person only gets one email. We do this by adding a select step. Just type select into the search that filters the actions down here and it's this one here. In the from, I'm going to get the values from the table. So I can just add dynamic content and click on that. And in the map, we're going to switch to text mode. And in here, all I want to do is grab the list of emails. So select is just extracting the emails from my table. Let's add a new step because next we need to find a distinct list and we can do that with compose. So select compose from the list and here the input is an expression. We can use the union function to generate a distinct list and here I want to select dynamic content and we're going to reference the output from the select step which is our list of emails and then reference it again. And by referencing itself it generates a distinct list. Click OK and that's our compose step done. Next, we want to add a control to extract the data for the email from each row of the Excel table. So we want a control and we want the apply to each action. This is going to loop through the rows in the Excel table. So the source here is our output from the compose step. Remember that's the array of distinct emails. And then I want to add an action to filter the values from the table. So in here, I want to filter array and there it is there, the filter array operation. And my array to filter is going to be the values from the table where the email is equal to the current item. Now the current item is the outputs up here and we can see that that's the outputs from the compose step and the compose step is a distinct list of emails. So we want to filter the array where the email is equal to the distinct list of emails. And then we're ready to create the HTML table that's going to be inserted into our email. So in here we want to filter for HTML and create HTML table. The HTML table is going to get the body of the data in the filter array. So basically the data from the Excel file. Now I can let Power Automate insert all the columns from the original table, or if I only want some columns, I can specify them in the advanced columns. And then instead of automatic, we choose custom. And in here I type in the column headers and then the values. So I only want two columns, the due date and the task name. You can't have any spaces in the headers. So that's why due date is one word. Now in the value, I need to enter an expression. Remember my dates are date serial numbers in Excel, so I need to tell Power Automate how to format them. So we're going to format date time, and we're going to get the item from the due date column, and we want to format that MMM day and then year. We'll click OK. The next column I want is just the task name. So again, we need an expression. This time it doesn't need any formatting because it's already text. So we just want the item and we want the item from the task column. And lastly, I want to generate the email. So I'll add an action. I'm going to use Office 365 Outlook. And in here, I want send an email V2. For the email addresses, I can use dynamic content, which is the current item. Remember the current item is the list of distinct emails. So let's scroll down and choose current item. 
Then in the subject, again, I can use dynamic content here, but I don't need it in this case. I just want the subject to say tasks do. The body is the HTML table we created here. So we want the output of the HTML table. I can add some text before it. For example, I might want to say, please find a list of your upcoming tasks. I can use the formatting tools up here to format this font. And because the output is an HTML table, if I'm familiar with HTML, I can use the code view and add in some formatting to nicely format that table. I'm going to leave it as is because it's fairly basic anyway. Now in the advanced options, you can choose who the sender is and CC or BCC others. You can also add attachments, set sensitivity, reply to and importance. Let's set the importance to high because these are due tasks. We want people to pay attention to them. And that's it. All I need to do here is save it. And before we test it out, let's recap what we've done. First, we set up the trigger for the flow and we set it to run every day. Then we got the data and filtered it for today's date. Then we got a list of all the emails in the file so that we could create a distinct list to ensure that people only got one email. And in the apply to each step, we filtered the data, created a HTML table, which we inserted into the email. So let's test the flow. We're going to manually test it run the flow. It's done. Let me go check my email. And there's the email that I received. You can see I've got two tasks, book venue and book entertainment. And the due date is March the 3rd. If you wanted to inspect any of these steps and see what the output is, you can do that here. So for example, if we look at the select step, you can see it selects the data in each row of the table. So that's the first row second row, third row, and down the bottom we have the emails that it's extracted. And then in the compose step, you can see it's reduced that to just two emails so that we have a distinct list. I hope you found this useful and you're excited to give Power Automate a try. Go ahead and grab the step-by-step -step written instructions from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.